necessity is the mother of invention. Once in a while, gifted people come along. You get a couple of farm boys, my grandfather and his brother, barely out of their teens, and rather than go back to the farm, decide to come to Madison and open up a, a shop called Trochte Brothers. The Trochtes, like most people their age, were born on a farm, uh, moved to the city to find their fortune, and then went into something that was uh, related to industrial manufacturing, which was booming in the cities. They had a, a tremendous amount of confidence in themselves, and they wanted to mix it up in commerce. They wanted to build stuff. The company started in 1901 on King Street in Madison. They mostly did water tanks, water heaters, uh, troughs for feed and things of that nature for farmers. Big, big demand for livestock watering tanks and the frustration of having to produce them like they had to produce them with the solder and all this tedious stuff that, that was time consuming. And in the back of their mind, I'm guessing, especially to Arthur, he's thinking, there's got to be a way we can form a panel through a machine so that we don't have to solder, we can wrap the tank with a panel. It was what drove the inspiration for the roll former. The roll former would cut the time involved in assembling this product. Ease of construction, basically. Now the rolling of a panel takes doesn't take any time at all. And it's just really kind of a historical accident that this becomes something that they apply to fabricating buildings. George and Art bought a brand new Dodge in 17. Arthur, when he had it, and it bothered him that this brand new car that he must have been, both of them, terribly proud of, had to be exposed to the elements. So he got the idea of taking this crimped metal that they were producing for horse troughs for the sides of the trough and just standing it up on end and bolting it into a metal frame and bending a couple pieces that arced over the top that created a roof to it, and he built himself a garage. This was the first metal building structure that anybody had ever seen. People started uh, admiring the garage and wanting garages uh, from them, and they realized that they had a business on their hands. They would come up and knock on the door and Meta, Art's wife, would send them over a mile and a half away to, you want one? Go over to the shop and talk to George or talk to Arthur. And that became the first Procti building. I try to put myself in the mind of people in 1917 when he built that garage out of corrugated metal and how wildly futuristic that must have seemed because people just didn't build like that during that time period. So it would have been seen as something that was really very, very novel. That was the start then of a whole new industry that is so commonplace today, it's not funny, and that, that being the metal building industry. The reason that could get started is with an invention of the roll former. This first building that Arthur put together to house their Dodge, there was no framework. So then it was, a, I think, probably simple step for them to come up with an angle iron framework that they could bolt together, to which they could bolt panels. Not a very crude structure anymore, but actually engineering a building that would serve as an early garage for the early automobiles. By 19, they had developed a metal building line. Part of the genius of what the Tracty brothers did is they created a design that was inherently modular. You can make a Trachty building any size that you want just by adding additional panels. It was a kid in a candy store for the first 20 years. By the time they're at the 30s, even the late 20s, we're on warehousing, cotton gins, boathouses, corn cribs, school buildings, airplane hangers, when uh, Lindbergh flew the Spirit of St. Louis on its transcontinental flight, he stopped in Madison along the way and housed his plane in a Trachty hangar. Anything they could think of, they could get it done. The feature was it's a metal building, very low cost, relatively speaking. They could assemble it themselves. Standing in Madison, there are still some garages in use yet. You'll see 
commercial industrial buildings with the round roof, the Trakti round roof or barrel vaulted roofs, those started in the 1920s. There, there wasn't much competition. The resistance was society wasn't used to housing anything in a metal building. Turn of the century, the steel building was considered more or less a folly. Metal building acceptance exploded after World War II. Now with that came competition. The Zenith was early to middle 50s. They were selling and manufacturing essentially the same building that they had put forward in 1919. And it was a framework more that was limiting than anything else initially. And so what happened in the middle 50s to late 50s, other viable metal building companies were able to span 25 feet rather than 12 feet. And it didn't take very long, I would say seven or eight years, to where Trakti felt a severe impact. I don't think they saw it coming, you know? They had been the only ones in the market for a long time. And when you're young and, and, and not very experienced, you think that that is just going to go on forever. And it doesn't. They'd been in it 49 years. They were old. They were ready to, you know, step away from the pace. It was logical for Art and George to sell to a family member, and Dad was fully invested. Dad, the only job he ever had was working at Trachty Metal Buildings, so that's all he did. He said, I've got a better idea for the framework of the Trachty Building, but it's steeped in 30 years of success, steeped with probably George and Arthur in their advanced ages saying, don't, why fool with a good thing? This channel frame building was nice. It was far stronger than angle iron. It had essentially two legs, two vertical legs, rather than one. Well, the channel frame design, uh, you were able to do uh, larger spans or less material than you could over conventional construction. And if you had less material and could use larger spans, you were expanding your uses and cutting your costs at the same time. Let's call it the rebirth of a truck deep building. Bob's early design has evolved considerably over the years, but I think in his mind, he felt that at some point, you could build pretty much anything that you could do with wood, you could also do with the steel channel frame. When you walk in and, and see some of their product today or their buildings today, in many ways, it, it still is going back to the principles that Art and George started, you know, well over 100 years ago. For companies to be able to survive as long as the Tractees are, it takes uh, passion. You have to love what you do and really want to do it as well as you possibly can, because if you don't, your competitors will do it better than you. Uh, you have to be innovative. You have to move with the industry, or you become a dinosaur and you're not relevant anymore. And you have to just persevere. Necessity is the mother of invention. The, you know, those words come rolling back from my father, and uh, it, it's unfortunate that he's not around, that I, I would listen a lot more carefully, <laughs> of course.